You know, every uh, Christmas, uh, I write a poem, and the idea of this poem uh, is Christmas is a magical season, and I say that with every ounce of its meaning, because, you know, God became man. I mean, for us to try to comprehend that, for me to try to explain that with words, it's an impossible task. And so I started to write a poem. I'm not a poet, I I don't think. But the idea is to bring about what God did through the ordinary means of words so that you can maybe walk away with a little bit of of a glimpse of the miracle that is Christmas. And so this poem is entitled, What Do You Want for Christmas? Mariah says that she does not want a lot, not new things nor the jackpot. She says that all she needs is you. But we all know that that's a fairy tale. It ain't true. We all know this from the beginning of time, since Adam asked Eve, will you be mine? See, at first, Adam and Eve, they had each other, man and his wife, naked, unashamed, completely for each other. But since man bit off that forbidden fruit, they started to recognize that they were in their birthday suit. Feeling exposed, humiliated, don't look at me, they proclaimed. They sewed fig leaves in order to cover their shame. They blamed, defamed as they tried to reclaim their dignity, their worth, themselves, this earth. But it was too late. Love died, gave birth to hate. Separation, isolation. They had no connection. See, what we need for Christmas is freedom from this game. Because we all know it drives us insane to stop pretending and covering up. Because we all know the leaves wither up. It's exhausting, unending. That's why God said, hold up. Hold up. He sees your shame. How you want to hide and want to disappear. Trying to keep all your secrets as you live in fear. There is no way, this is no way to live this kind of life. What kind of life is this? But this is the thing. God doesn't leave us in our filth. Instead, see, he makes a great promise to end your shame through through his offspring for Christmas. But what if your struggle is more than just shame? Because for Jacob, his struggle was not quite the same. He lied, he cheated, he was grabby. He was greedy. He seemed to enjoy being a man who was seedy. But after years of living away from his family, having lived a life full of calamity, he started to realize the consequences of his actions. These sins, transactions, leave things in fractions. How do you undo all the bad things you do? Undo all the pain of the, all the people you lie to? In its moments, it is moments. It's in moments like this you push everyone away because you hate yourself as as you live in dismay. As boys to men once sang, you thought it was the end of the road. But he did not know that God would not let go. So that night without an announcement, God wrestled Jacob, but he did not know that it was God in this fight club. I want you to know this. I want you to know this. When you wrestle in life, often it is God wrestling with you. You may not know it just because he is not in view. And when it seems like he is fighting against us, you will see that in reality he is only fighting for us. That night Jacob did not get a purple heart. Instead, he confessed his sins and got a new start. He thought he was done, that his life was trivial. That's when God said, your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel. The world we live in is full of many struggles. We wish we had magic, but we're only a muggle, like Dumbledore to cast out evil and, some, and find some relief. 
Because we all know all this suffering tests our belief. We cry, we wail like a woman in labor. But like State Farm, he's a good neighbor. No matter how far, no matter where you are, he will come from afar to exactly where you are. He has loved us with an everlasting love. It's not like ours, short-lived and short-loved. He is faithful, he is a redeemer, not ignorant, but observant. That's why we know him as the suffering servant. God knows our division, our hatred, our derision. How we only make provision for those in our subdivision. If we could, we would build a great wall between God and us. Oh, I guess we did that. We called it the Tower of Babel. When we chose to make a name for our, make for ourselves a name, to have all the acclaim and have that BTS fame. We want all the glory without the humility and without realizing we end up hurting somebody. And after centuries, it seems like that's all we do. We tear down a press and we argue. So thank God he had a mission. He came to Abraham and he shared his vision to make his name great. That was his ambition. From Abraham to David to Jesus and through all the generations, God, God came through on his promise, through all the opposition. Then after his life, death, and resurrection, the disciples followed Christ's great commission to make disciples from the ends of the earth. The Spirit came, Pentecost, the mission was birthed. And one day we will worship all the nations in unity. Because of the Lamb, we will have eternal immunity. So for Christmas, the best present is not what you will get. The best present is what Christ has already said. I guess Mariah was right. There is only one thing we need. It's not the present underneath the Christmas tree. All I want for Christmas is you. Not you, but you, Jesus. Jesus.